everybody. Welcome to BS of the Week. I'm Patrick Driggett, coach of the Berlin Fire. It's our 25th episode, and we just finished our wild card games, and we're reviewing those right now. And, and I'm joined by my friend. Hi there. I'm Kevin Lucy from the Glasgow Rushmores. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Uh, yeah, it was an exciting time. I'm actually... I, I'm on my bad camera because I'm on my laptop down here in a uh, very rainy California. Actually, they they say it never rains, but uh, and there was a song if you remember back in the day, but it is very wrong about that right now. But yeah, glad to be back from the holiday and uh, be looking at these games. There were some really exciting ones. Uh, it was great, great week. Um, I don't know. I, I looked at the PFC. I don't know. What what did you think of the LFC? Well, basically, in the LFC, obviously, the, the first game that we had uh, was the Mount Dora Massive, 14, uh, against the uh, Brisbane Phoenix, 48. Uh, so this, to be quite honest, was an awesome performance by the Phoenix. Um, so hats off to them. Uh, it was a pretty much a straightforward win. Um, and basically what happened was Ian's Phoenix just dominated um, the, the clock, uh, 63% time of possession. Uh, they just kept rushing, and it was really a rushing masterclass uh, of 290 yards, um, basically all on the deck. Um, their running back, Vedel, uh, had 215 yards of those, and he was ably supported by their other running back, uh, Quintero, who had 77 yards. And just to keep the massive honest, they also threw for 103 yards as well, just to keep them off guard. Um, so all in all, um, pretty much a predictable sort of win and also a very comfortable win. However, and I mean however, and Ian's not going to like this, uh, I actually think that um, Martin should have won um, because basically in my book, any head coach that has the kahunas to persuade his offensive line to actually line up in the cuddly duvet stance, uh, or not if they don't go into the cuddly duvet stance, they go into the shotgun wedding stance, or the shot to the heart stance, or the three shots in the dark stance, uh, or the for your life stance. Um, and basically, if, as if it wasn't bad enough with the offense, he also does it with his defense. And he gets them to play, play the Brian Adams uh, defense um, and also with a cat scrap stance. So if all that doesn't justify a place in the Super Bowl, God knows what does. <laughs> I mean, so, certainly, certainly wins most creative stance. In the yes. Of the year. So fair play to you, Martin. That was unbelievable. Uh, we really do appreciate the, the effort that's gone into uh, naming those defences. Uh, unfortunately, though, the Phoenix won. <laughs> so the next but, but game... not in our got... hearts. Martin wins in our hearts. Yeah, Martin wins in our hearts. Yeah, so the next game is uh, the Statesman, uh, 32, uh, against the Knights, 22. Uh, <clears throat> now, here, I have to say, I was... Um, Lee's tactics um, in this game really surprised me big time. Um, not sure what Lee was doing here, whether he was trying to outfox Brian, uh, whether it was a bluff and counter bluff, or whether it was bluff, bluff and counter bluff, who knows. Um, but basically, Lee has the sixth best rushing offense in the whole of Big Sky. Uh, and he's got the 29th best passing offense. OK, so I was fully expecting Lee to pound out the yardage on the ground um, to basically just control the clock. Now, in fairness to him, he did control the clock. He also had 63 percent of time of possession. But and this is a big but. He only carried the ball 23 times in the whole game, and yet he attempted to pass 48 times. So with his uh, offensive figures like that, I was really shocked. It shot the life out of me. And I presume it did uh, for Brian as well, uh, because I just wasn't expecting that at all. Now, in fairness to, to Lee, his quarterback, Arahathan, um, threw well. Uh, he threw 75% completion rate. Uh, and his tight ends, uh, Belantis and his wide receiver, Sathad, uh, 
both received the ball in the short yard passing game uh, really well for over 200 yards between them. So I guess overall, um, if you win a game, I guess the plan has worked. Um, but as I say, I was a little bit shocked. And I have to say, it was one heck of a close game. The scoreline, the 32-22, actually flatters Lee quite a bit because uh, right up until two minutes and 20 seconds to go, the scores were tied at 22 apiece. Uh, and then what happened was a bit of individual brilliance, to be quite honest. And we had a seven-yard short pass to Sathad. Uh, he brilliantly sidestepped the defence beat the defence, went in for a touchdown, and the game was over. Um, now, again, one of the, the stars of the show, to a certain extent, a bit of an unsung star, was their uh, kicker, uh, Exiget, Exigent, uh, who kicked for six out of six field goals and converted two extra points. Now, again, none of the yardage was that, that uh, far out. Uh, having said that, in a tight playoff game, uh, you need your kicker to come up with the goods and to get 20 points on his own. Certainly uh, did the, the statesman uh, cause no end of good, as it were. So a really good win from Lee. It'll be very interesting to see what he does in the next game. So what happened in the PFC then, Patrick? Well, we had, we had some exciting stuff. Um, so first off, surfers at Eagles. Um, I was so very wrong about this game when I talked about it uh, last week or the week before um, the results seemed obvious to me. Um, you know, the Eagles uh, let, let's just the Eagles. Let's go back to the regular season. The Eagles circled week 10 against the surfers as their key game and they get smashed. I mean, absolutely smashed. They lose three to 20 um, and, and, and then they're going to be facing the surfers in the wild card round because of that, you know, result. Uh, I felt really bad for them, to be honest. I was like, this is how, what a way to go into the playoffs. You just lost 320 in your key game, and now you're going to go against the same opponent. Like, this is not, I wouldn't have been very excited uh, going into that. I, I probably would have been wringing my hair out. Uh, but, you know, this time, though, because they were the division winner, they get to play at home. Uh, with the sellout crowd, and that's the playoffs. And so, you know, the stir surfer started the game, they got the ball, and then right away this vicious defensive battle started. And uh, the Eagles take the ball away, they get it on the opponent's 20, and then they quickly convert it into three points and get the first points on the board. And then grueling drives, just like back and forth, several grueling drives later um, for both teams, and then the Eagles get it through the uprights again for another three points. And so now they're up 6-0, back and forth again. Eagles, you know, get it nine up again uh, right before the – the um, about halfway through the second quarter. And then um, 10 seconds left in the first half, the surfer said, you know what, uh, we're, let's, uh, let's take advantage of some play action. They laid one deep over the Eagles, uh, got their first score, and, you know, they keep – they got points and scored the extra points. So it's 7-9. It's a close game. It's been an absolute defensive battle, um, and it's anyone's game at this point, right? You, two points is nothing, you know? So it's a, it's a one-score game. So then the teams come back on the field, they and it's the same. It's a slugfest, back and forth, back and forth. And then in the 53rd minute, the Eagles again, uh, this time they find Pater all the way to, for a touchdown on a really well-timed draw play, and they go in, get the score, and it was just – it was a clinical defensive struggle. It, um it could have gone either way the whole time, I think. But, I mean, it was a slugfest, but not not like one of those, you know, three to six slugfests. Like, there was things going on, but, I mean, it was really, like, back and forth just, you know, in the in the mud. So, um, you know, and the fact that the Eagles uh, are under a caretaker coach, you know, they win the day. I, I, very impressive game. And uh, I, I, the, you know, final score, Eagles 16, Surfer 7. It was an awesome, awesome game. I uh, don't know if you had a chance to watch that one. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. It was good. Um, so yeah, then, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it, Phil's done remarkably well as a caretaker coach. I mean, we yeah. knew Andy had a good team, a good basis of a team in Newcastle there, but um, for a caretaker coach to come in and mm -hmm. get so far already is one heck of an achievement in itself. Yeah. yeah someone, someone's going to, uh, someone lucky is going to be able to take over that team and do something interesting. I think uh, so yeah. that, that was great. 
So then we get to uh, another really fun game, Generals at Rapiers. Uh, you know, um, again, a great storyline here. Let's just set it up. Week six, the Rapiers play the Generals at home. They mark it as their key game of the season, and they lose. So then in week nine, they visit Seattle, and, and they're like, oh, you're going to take one from me at home. I'm going to take one from you at home. And then they win that one. They, you know, they return the favor. And uh, but this time, kind of uh, uh, in the same situation with the Eagles at home, now the Rapiers get to play at home again, but this time with a sold out crowd uh, to motivate them. They not only played them close, but they smashed them. I mean, pretty handily, uh, especially in the second half. You know, they went into halftime 17 all great game. You know, it was very well matched. Um, but I guess they got a motivational speech in the locker room because. They came out and they absolutely shut down the generals the second half. Um, and so, uh, you know, the generals were making a game of it, like I said, but the second half showed that they just weren't going to be able to, to, to keep up. Um, and so, um, you know, it was pretty methodical in the second half. And so I don't think it was that defensive close struggle that you saw in the, the in the first game with the, with the surfers and Eagles, but still, I mean, they played it close early. It was a really interesting, you know, They've split games in the regular season. This really could have gone either way, and the Rapiers just, you know, the second half, their plan was great. They came out, they uh, they set up scores, and and they won. And so uh, that was a really exciting game. General 17, Rapiers 34. So Yeah, the Rap- Rapiers have had a really good second half of the season, haven't they? They've yeah, really yeah. come back well. I'm really happy. <clears throat> I've known Phil for a long time, and, and, and I'm really happy for him to, to, to get a shot at these playoffs and – and he's going to have a challenge uh, up ahead, so we'll talk about that. But why don't you let us know about what's coming up in the LFC? Okay, LFC, we're getting to crunch time, as they say. Um, <clears throat> we have the Phoenix playing against the Sharks next season, next uh, week, rather. Uh, and here, I'm guessing our old friend Benjamin is probably sitting there rubbing his hands together, uh, going, oh, whoop de woo I'm at home. I've got home field advantage. Uh, and... Uh, I'm looking at this massive, and when I say massive, I mean massive Phoenix injury list. Um, show you how bad it is. Let me just read it out to you uh, to show you just the extent of this injury list. He has Victor, a B injury, Cox, a C injury, Nak- Nakamura, a C injury, Carson, an E, uh, Ashley, a B, Jones, another E. Potter, a B. Borrell has two injuries, a C and a B. And Loy has two injuries as well, both Cs. That is his injury list. You Going know, Ian, into Ian a vital... Be, Ian didn't want to be outdone in, the, you know, in our division. Not only did he want to win it, he saw that the Lynn <laughs> Fire was leading the injury list uh, contest, and he had to yeah. also win that. And I oh, he's, think he's really left just you, going off at a point. Left you, know? left you standing, mate. <laughs> you know, that is one heck of an injury list. However, Benjamin, if you're listening to this, be warned. Okay, that injury list I've just read out is an improvement on the squad that he had when he played Martin in his last game. In fact, he's had eight... Uh, levels of recovery since the last game okay and he beat uh martin 48 whatever it was uh so i wouldn't write off uh his team just yet benjamin um so basically um when you look at the spread the official spread for the game what we have is we have uh, a four point um game as far as the uh um is it Reiki is concerned, uh, and it's basically four points to the Phoenix. That's that's what is predicted. So, what are my predictions? Well, basically, this game is going to be played uh, on the ground without any question whatsoever. What we have is we have the Phoenix, who are the second best team uh, in Big Sky uh, in terms of rush offense, and they are playing the Sharks, who are the third best team in rush offense. Um, the Phoenix are the 25th best passing and the Sharks are the 23rd best passing. So if you're going to the air, you're starting to get a little bit desperate. Um, so these two teams have basically got one heck of a rush offense. Uh, if you look at the defense, and this, I think, is where the game will come down to. The difference in the defense is, is that the Phoenix are the sixth best rush defense. Uh, and... 
they are uh, the uh, Sharks are the 17th best rush defense. And in terms of the air, the Phoenix are the seventh best pass defense and the Sharks the 14th best pass defense. So in terms of the defenses, it would appear to me that um, the Phoenix have got the stronger defense. So here uh, is really down to Benjamin. Is he going to pull a few sh sharp ones? Is he going to try and get one over uh, on Ian by sort of coming up with some imaginative game plan that Ian wasn't expecting? Or is he going to stick to the, the, the ground? How much of a difference is uh, home field advantage going to make? Uh, and will those injuries catch up? Uh, my prediction for what it's worth is I think that the Phoenix will actually beat the spread. So I think it'll be a bigger victory than four points. And I'm going for the Phoenix uh, to actually run that one out. What are your thoughts on it, Patrick? <laughs> I know our old friend Benjamin won't like this. <laughs> you know, I here's I have such a hard time evaluating the Phoenix. I mean, they are so strong. And I um I know Ben's very studious and he has a very strong supply. I mean, he's really done well. And so you know, I I like to, you know, this isn't the NFL, right? And so uh, I enjoy rooting for my fellow division mates. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for Lee. Um, I have a lot of respect for Ian and, and, and of course, our, our, our good friend of the show who did not make the playoffs. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I have a lot of love for them. And, and, uh, and, I, and I really do think the Phoenix might have the edge. But Ben is a, a professional. He's good at this. You know, I think he's put a lot of time into this. He's learned a lot. So I, I wouldn't be surprised either way. Uh, I'd actually probably be more surprised if it's a blowout either way. I think that would yeah. be the biggest shock to me. Um, so uh, I, I know I'm not exactly answering your question. I mean, I did try. I do think the Phoenix is probably the yeah, best. It was a pretty pathetic effort, though, Patrick. S yeah. Sitting on the fence is what we call that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I have to – it's political. It's for my, you know, soon <laughs> – I have my asper my political aspirations, you know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, let's, let's see I how you get commissioner. Uh, yeah. Something non unimportant. <laughs> well, let me let me see how you get on with the next one then, because the Southern Statesman against the um, the Giant Hornets uh, again isn't one heck of a close one. Uh, these two teams actually played each other uh, back in week two uh, at the Statesman's uh, pad. And it was a 26-21 win to the Hornets, which was really, really close. It was particularly close when you think of what a bad phase that Lee was actually going through with his team at that stage. Um, so now what we have is we have a role reversal. Uh, and this game has obviously been played at the Hornets. Uh, now, I had a look at the, the two uh, squads. And what I found was that you've got Calgary and Tripson, along with two other uh, players in the Hornets team who have home um, home uh, what do you call it uh, home streak um, yeah uh, attributes and on Lee's side you've only got one player in the whole of his squad who has uh, a travelling uh, attribute so with that you have to say that it's very much advantage Hornets uh, being the home team there however <clears throat> what we have in this game is we have the fourth best passing team in the Hornets, uh, playing against the 12th best passing defense in the Statesman, okay? We also have the sixth best rushing team, uh, namely the Statesman, playing against nearly the worst rushing defense in the whole of Big Sky. In fact, there are only the Bombers, the Devils, uh, the Huskies, and <clears throat> the Fire, who actually have a worst rushing defense in the whole of the league. So here, I would have to say that's probably advantage statesman, um, because although you've got the trips from Calgary, um, you, you've got quite a good passing defense from the statesman there. So my prediction, <laughs> OK, how's the game going to go? Well, basically, in my view, you've got Calgary, trips and Watson uh, playing against the statesman short pass defense. Uh, and on the other side of the fence, you've got running back Patrick. Uh, and the statesman uh, useful offensive line uh, who are going to be smashing against uh, the Hornets' rush defense. Uh, Reiki, or the game, gives uh, the game a six-point spread. 
uh, for the hornets. Okay. Uh, I, on the other hand, I'm going to say that uh, the statesman will beat that spread. Okay. So I don't think it's going to be six points. Uh, having said that, how who wins is very debatable. I can see this being a one or two point game, similar to um, you know to what we said before. These are going to be very tight games, I think, and I will be amazed if it's a blowout one way or the other. Yeah, what do you think? It, you, yeah, I easily could see it kind of being a track meet too. I feel like there's going to be a lot of yardage on both sides of the ball, and then really it's you know sometimes we see that where both teams are moving the ball, but one is getting the points, and so I think it really does. Does someone kind of get that small advantage where they're getting it in the end zone and start to pull away with it? But I think that also means that they should be able to come back. So I think it's going to be right up to the end. I think it's going to be an exciting game yeah. for us to watch and. Um, you know, I'm rooting for Lee. I think the Giant Hornets probably have the advantage here. I don't know about the spread. I don't really have a prediction there. But I, yeah. I do think the trips in Calgary kind of short pass because in, in LFC East, that's one of the least – that's probably the smallest zone. I don't think Lee has to worry about that zone as much. Um, and so I think that that's, that might give the advantage to the giant Hornets, but I could be wrong. Like, I, I don't know exactly. It's been a while since I analyzed Lee's roster, but the Hornets are also 13 and 0 this season. So they're having right. one heck of a season. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I want to end at home, you know, with the home streak, I, I think I'm going to give it advantage to, to the, uh, the giant Hornets. Um, but I think Lee's going to make a game of it. I mean, he's, he's been, yeah, he's a legend. You know, he knows this game. He, the game plan is going to be the best game plan he can come up with for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening in the PFC then? What, who have we got coming up then? Oh, you might've heard of this team called the Rivets. <laughs> they play this week. Uh, Ray Pierce at Rivets. Phil uh, pulled the wrong straw. Um, but, you know, here's what I want to say. First of all, the preview is showing the spread at four. Now, that's not the small spread this season. Um, uh, actually, the... Uh, you know, the Rivets had a spread of two in week two and still won 41 to 20. So, so to say, I don't think that means a whole lot. And, and you know why? And this is where I think it's going to come down to. The reason is that it's going to be hard to predict any game for the Rivets because of the Rivets special teams, which I don't know how much that, spread, you know, goes into. Yeah, I'm imagining that when they, whatever logic they use to create that spread, I bet. I wonder if the weighting of, of special teams is there, uh, and and because the the thing they have to contend with, right? Well, first let's just lay the facts on the ground. The Rapiers have a strong offense and a top five defense. They are rated better than the Rivets in that way. But if you end up letting the Rivets start on the fifty yard line, they're playing with half the field, and 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 so if they can do something there, they have a fighting chance. I just I haven't seen a team yet be able to do that. And so, you know, does Phil have what it take to stop the rivets? The, the rapier is going to stop them short enough, make it a 75 yard field, you know, a 60 yard field, anything will give me an advantage, right. To, to let his really strong defense and his good offense kind of allow them to pull ahead without giving that short field to the rivets. Um, Cause that I think is really their advantage here now at this age of the roster. And so, you know, but it's the rivets at home. Uh, you know, I really can't say with any confidence that the rapiers are going to win this game, but if any team is poised for an upset against a rivets in playoffs, this is probably the game. Uh, I don't see any of the other ones challenging the rivets the way that this game was like if, if, if there's any chance that the rivets lose this season, it, I think this is the last one. That's my opinion. Um, so, yeah. And what do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> Rivets at home is basically yeah. all you all you can see in any game, and it's almost irrelevant as to who they're playing. Just the Rivets at home at the moment, right. I think, are pretty awesome. To be quite honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm certainly I want to give credit to Phil, but I just yeah, I I, I think you're right, uh, and I, I still think it's. When I'm speaking about having more chance, I mean, you know, it's it is a higher chance than other people. It doesn't mean it's a good chance yeah. that they'll yeah. win, you know. Yeah. But how exciting would that be? I think that'd be very exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, also Conrad, great friend of the show, and, and obviously we wish yeah. I know he's going for that record, uh, the win record. So I, you know, I, that also makes me excited. But you know, I think be 
pretty awesome if Phil could also stop them there. You know, these are, yeah. these are all really cool storylines, in my opinion. Yeah. So. And so last we have the Eagles at Packers. Um, preview is showing a three-point spread in this one. They didn't play against each other this season. And, and, and I don't think this is an easy one to call, honestly. They're both top 10 offenses and defenses. So, so they're very, you know, they're up there. Uh, they've got very strong on both sides. I do think that there's a little bit of, of an advantage here where the, uh, the Eagles, despite having a top seven defense, they do have the 23rd worst rush defense. And so, um, and well, is 23rd worst? I don't know if I said that correctly, but they're ranked yeah, no, 23rd no, no. for rush. And so they're just, that's probably the biggest outlier but the Packers aren't strong on pass defense themselves. So, I mean, it's you give a little, you, you take a little. I, I think this is a really hard one to call. Um, but here is how I broke this down. Um, the Eagles, while they've had a, you know, a really good run, they ate, went 8-1-1, eight, one and one, I think they're in an arguably easier division than uh, the Packers. And the Packers went 9-1 and one in that more difficult division. Um, and so because of that and it being slight toss up at the Packers at home, I'm going to have to place my money on the Packers uh, to win this one. Yeah. No, I think that's a fair bet. I mean, I think the game could well be decided by one error, mm -hmm. uh, an interception or a fumble or yeah. something like that. I think it's as close as that. Um, you would say the Packers have got home field advantage, which is always um, an advantage. Right. Um but again, I think this one's going to be a really close game as well. Yeah, it's a very exciting playoff. Um, you know, even even to be able to talk about the Rapiers and Rivets, you know, yeah. Uh, despite the odds being low, it's it's at least in the realm of real. And so I think that that's I think there's just four really good games this week, and I think that's yeah, going to be exciting are. to watch. I mean, so. Yeah, I mean it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting. Uh, interesting show next week. Let's put it that way. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we've got four cracking games coming up. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Well, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for for you know breaking down those games and and giving your predictions. Uh, this is fun. I'm excited. Next week yeah. we'll uh, we'll break down to see what happened here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate. It. Glad to have you back from the holidays. It's our 25th episode, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. That's uh, I know in some number system that'd be neat. Uh, so maybe Roman numerals. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, it's, it's good. Um, but no, thank you for uh, joining me. Glad to have you back and uh, hope that you uh, have an awesome rest of your week and, and all you out there as well. Yep. Thanks, guys. Goodbye, everyone.